everybody, Assistant Director Jeff here again. Uh, welcome to our brand new uh, fire pit and uh, all camp facility here, right here on the shores of Eagle Lake. We can sit all of our camp here for our great Wednesday night all camps and Friday night campfires. We look forward to seeing everybody here again joining us on the side of the lake next summer and enjoying our wonderful campfire. Now that we're into August and those cool August evenings, there's nothing better than sitting with your family next to a campfire and enjoying the stars and enjoying each other's company. I thought I'd take a moment to show you how to make the perfect campfire so you don't have to scream at white rabbits or dodge sparks while you're enjoying yourselves. Before you start thinking about your campfire, you need to make sure that you know the rules and regulations in your local municipality about having fires. First off being some municipalities require permits for even cooking and warped campfires. Okay? Cooking and warped campfires are under one square meter and you have to actually have marshmallows, hot dogs or something that you're going to be cooking on that fire. Okay, burning brush and burning debris does not count and you can get yourself in a little trouble with the bylaw enforcement or your fire, local fire department. You also need to make sure that you've got a means of extinguishment, water or shovel to put sand or whatever you have to put out the fire, handy and available. Because once that fire started, you are responsible for it and what happens if it gets out of control uh, if you're not safe with your campfire. Another thing we want you to make sure of is if you are going to an area that's unknown, it's your responsibility to check the local fire ratings and make sure that you are safe to burn and we're not in a high or extreme fire rating. What I find are one of the most common mistakes uh, when people are having fires is their selection of wood um, and the types of materials they're using to get their fire going. I like to keep it simple. Um, so we have kindling and we have our hardwoods. Um, our kindling and tinder material is what we're gonna get our fire started with and the hardwoods are what we're gonna really enjoy later on um, while we're at our fire. If you are burning only softwoods, uh, up into the larger sizes. Softwood contains a lot of resins and moisture, and that's what you're gonna get your sparks coming off your hot fires later. Burn the holes in your clothing, chairs, things like that. So only using softwoods or kindling material to start your fire is gonna make sure that those sparks aren't gonna be jumping at you all night, okay? Another thing is the type of hardwood you're using. So any kind of hardwood um, firewood is best for those long fires that you wanna have lots of good heat and coals for roasting marshmallows. Getting uh, firewood that is well aged, dry, and been seasoned for approximately a year makes it the best, is gonna give you the best warmth um, and heat value for your summer, for your fire this summer. One of the other things too is that that smoke that's um, bothering everybody around your fire is because your fire's not burning super hot. When you've got a really hot burning fire, that thermal convection is gonna bring that smoke up and away from you. If you're getting smoke coming at you, means that you're having a lot, a lot of um, heat is not bringing, rising that smoke up and coming sideways. Um, so the types of kindling that we have, we just have some pine here. Uh, I have it sorted, not all the time, but just for the demonstration for small, medium, and large. Once I get into the hardwoods, it's the same thing: small, medium, and large. Okay. As I build my fire, I'm going to start with small, add the medium, and go from there. Okay, if we're throwing big stuff on right away, we're gonna have a hard time keeping that fire going and gaining that heat and getting all our materials to burn at the same time. Again, if, if you're camping or an area where firewood isn't readily available, make sure you understand that if you're in a national park, uh, provincial park campground, it, you cannot forage for firewood while you're there. So making sure you're purchasing some good wood or bringing it with you within local regulations, not transporting wood from Southern Ontario to Northern Ontario, et cetera. But Peeling birch bark off trees, breaking off branches, things like that are harmful to trees and destroy the natural environment around campfires. Okay, So finding tinder material like newspaper or birch bark off some of your firewood are great ways uh, to get that light wood or the kindling going to start. All right, so let's start building our campfire. So I start with my tinder material. Uh, even when I have birch bark, I like to thin it down, get it nice and small so that it's going to be easy to catch. Okay, big thick chunks of wood and birch bark are gonna, you're gonna find a hard time getting uh, lit and ignited and get that fire going. So just even starting with a log, that's gonna provide me a space where I can create a space where oxygen can get into the fire. So having my tinder material, I'm gonna take some of my really, really small kindling and place it over top of that material okay, and getting set to light. Now, we can start the debate over TP log cabin style, but it's whatever you prefer to build. There's no benefit to either. Um, it's whatever your
personal preferences. So again, I don't. I start with just a little bit. I want the the tinder material to catch. I want it to start burning uh, my kindling, and then I'm going to start adding kindling as I go to areas of the fire where it needs it, or I can see that it's going well to make sure that everything is going to ignite. So as my tinder starts to catch and the kindling's igniting, I carefully start placing the remainder of the wood on the fire. If I just throw it down, I'm gonna potentially uh, move the fire, put the fire out, um, and I'm just being a little bit more in control of what's happening and what I'm doing, how I'm placing. And you can already hear the snapping sound. And again, that's the resins and oils in the wood uh, burning off. And again, those are the sparks that you're gonna have later on if you're just burning softwoods. So most of my small kindling is burning now. And I just go on to my medium stuff. As you can see, it doesn't take long for all of our kindling from our small to our large stuff to ignite. Um, it burns hot, it burns fast, and it's a great way to get your fire going quickly. It's the hardwoods now that I start adding. And again, starting with small hardwood uh, so that I'm sure that it's going to catch and it's gonna keep, uh, get our fire really going. Hardwood also, as it burns, creates a longer lasting coal uh, and retains more heat once it's actually burned in your fire pit. So that hardwood is going to help keep your fire going longer. So getting a good base of smaller hardwood burning and actually burnt up before going to our bigger stuff is going to make sure that that larger material is going to burn and you're not going to get left with a lot of waste at the end of your campfire. As my smaller hardwood starts to get going, start adding on some of the larger stuff. It's gonna start moving your fire around just because it's a little heavier. So just be careful where you put it and how you're putting it on. Again, the goal that I have at the end of all of my campfires is to get those nice coals, not necessarily a big fire, but I love to toast marshmallows and so do my kids. So I want to have those nice red hot coals where you can get that perfect golden brown marshmallow on those great nights. Like most things, fires take a lot of patience and time to get them just how you want them. So don't be prepared to get your fire going early if you're expecting guests or you've got people coming down so that you're not uh, showering them with sparks, you're not smoking them out. And it's gonna take 15 to 20 minutes before you're able to start adding some of that bigger hardwood. Giving the, the medium and the small stuff time to burn down, create a nice hot bed of coals, and create a good base for your fire. So this summer, enjoy the campfire, enjoy family and friends, make sure you're being fire safe, and you're making sure you're doing your fires properly, um, so that you and your family can enjoy a nice, quiet evening evening or at the end of your campfire it's very important to make sure it's put out uh, for the night uh, or anytime you're going to leave it alone so that we don't cause any forest fires or any other potential problems related to an unattended fire again as the night is wearing down I stop putting wood on my fire I don't want to waste my wood but I'll even start pulling it apart taking some of the hardwood off the main bed of coals to try to get the fire to burn down on its own this is also gonna help me when I go to extinguish it that I've now exposed most of the wood and the coals so that I'm gonna get the water right on top of it, okay? I also wanna make sure I check the wind that when I pour the water on the fire, I'm not gonna be the one that's getting smoked out or steam burns, okay? I always start on the outside. The 
work my way in. Again, even after a half bucket of water, there's still lots of heat, there's still lots of steam coming off that fire. I'm gonna wait a minute before I put on the rest. I'm gonna turn over some of the wood, stir up the coals, expose any other hot spots. So then when I put on my next little bit of water, I'm making sure that I've got everything that I need. All right, we can still see some steam and heat and residual uh, heat from the fire. I'm not gonna walk away just yet. I'm gonna hang out for a minute, make sure that my fire's out and then head back up to the cottager house. Thanks everybody, enjoy your fires and we'll see you later.